Hi foodies, oxtail is such a simple ingredient, but with a lot of love and the attention it deserves, it can be so scrumptious, especially Jamaican style. So let's get into this delicious oxtail. Now, depending on who your butcher is, they might trim the oxtail nicely for you. If not, trim off that excess fat and then you can rinse it with some cold water, some lime juice and vinegar and then pat dry. OK, then I'm just going to pour on some olive oil and we'll start with the dry seasonings for the dry seasonings. It's oxtail seasoning, all purpose seasoning, some salt and black pepper and there's some onion powder and garlic powder. All right. Try to use Caribbean brands for this. OK, we're making Jamaican style oxtail. Then you can add some crushed allspice berries. You could use it whole if you prefer. Sometimes I actually add it whole. Then some green seasoning. This is a blend of herbs and aromatics. I have the recipe right here on my channel. So we're going to add that. Then we will go in with some soy sauce. If you don't want to add soy sauce, that's fine. Um, we will go in with some brown sugar. Sometimes I don't add brown sugar at this point, but there's a reason behind this today. And a little browning as well. Sometimes I don't add browning, but there's a reason for that as well. Okay, so I'm going in with some paprika. I just de decided to add that last minute. Okay, so just rub all of this into the meat make sure you massage everything in there the reason i'm adding brown sugar here today is the pots that i'm going to be using i don't want to do a lot of burnt sugar in it so i prefer to add the sugar here so that while i'm searing the oxtail that sugar will melt and caramelize and give it that color that i like so usually if i'm using my regular dutch pot i would burn the sugar all right so I wouldn't put a lot of sugar in the marinade itself. So let this marinate for 24 hours, ideally in the refrigerator. Now, one step that many Caribbean people take when we're doing any sort of brown stew is we put oil in the pot and then we add brown sugar and allow it to melt. I'm just going to do a small amount just to show you how we would do it. So you add the brown sugar and then you allow it to melt and then make this, you know, um, dark caramel. Once that caramel is formed in the pot, then we would add the meat and sear it in it. So that just adds a lot of color to the meat. OK, I'm just doing a small amount to show you because I've added brown sugar to the actual marinade. So I don't need to do a lot of burnt sugar here. OK, so we would just add the meat and sear on all sides. It really is up to you. I do whatever I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I'll do all burnt sugar. Sometimes I'll add brown sugar to the marinade or sometimes I'll use browning in the marinade. So you can use a little of everything or you can choose one. So you're just trying to get some color on the meat like this or even a little darker is fine. But you want it to be at least this brown. If you're making a large amount of oxtail, then you can sear some of it and then remove them and then sear the rest. You can always do it in batches and then add all of the seared meat back to the pot before you add the water. So decide what you want to do. You want to use just browning. You want to burn the sugar in the pot yourself or you want to just add brown sugar to the marinade. Once the meat is seared, we're going to add some water. You want to add the water till it's at least two inches above the meat because what we're going to do now is just simmer this for a while so the meat can get at least 90 percent tender okay if you want a lot of gravy you can add a lot more water if you only want a little gravy then you can add the water occasionally as the meat simmers on the stove so just cover this allow it to simmer over medium heat now, depending on the age of the animal, sometimes the oxtail will take two hours, sometimes three, sometimes one hour. So just keep checking on it to see if it's getting tender. When it's like cooked about 90% of the way, then we add some more ingredients. So I added soy sauce 
and I'm going to go in with some ketchup. You can use tomato paste or tomato puree if you prefer, but I love the ketchup from my brown stew. Then I'm going to add some onion, scallion, garlic, allspice, thyme, and tomato. Sometimes I add bell pepper. Remember to check the description box below the video, guys. I'm going to leave the list of ingredients down there. You just need to click that down arrow right beside the video title and it will open up the description box. I'm going to be adding two scotch bonnet peppers. You could cut it up if you prefer, but I like to add it whole. And we're going to simmer this and complete the cooking of the meat. Once the meat is even closer to doneness, I add some butter beans. You don't have to add this, but I grew up having butter beans in Oxdale, so I love to add it, okay? So we'll just pour that in, and this is canned, so it's not hard, you don't need to cook it for a long time. That is why we add it last minute. Now we just need to simmer this and allow the gravy to reduce and get a little bit richer and thicker. You can add potatoes, you can add carrots, some people even add dumpling. Um, you can even add sauces like these. Um, this is a pica pepper. The brand is Jamaican. Some people even add um, Jamaica Valley sweet pimento ketchup. You can add a little bit of this. There are so many sauces you can add just to pep up your gravy. So you can add them at this point. Um, there's also the Grace Oxtail Marinade. Even though it's a marinade, you could add a little here. And there is also the um, Grace Fish and Meat Sauce. That's another ingredient you could add here. So these are just little sauces I'm suggesting that you can, you know, put a little bit in the gravy just to add a little more flavor. But you don't have to. Sometimes I just stick to my, you know, soy sauce and ketchup and I'm good to go. So if you've decided to add a carrot or potatoes or the beans, you'll find that they help to thicken the gravy because they kind of soften a little bit. Some of the beans stay whole, but some of them soften and just add to the thickness of the gravy. However, if you still want it to be thicker, you can always add a slurry. A slurry is a mixture of cornstarch and water and you could stir it in. So I took out this scotch bonnet guys because I realized that it popped. So I took it out, right? So that's what I did there. But yeah, if you want the gravy to be thicker, you can always add a slurry. It's not something that's added traditionally. But if you want to, you can go ahead and add it. And once this is nice and rich and thick and the meat is falling off the bones, you are good to go. One of the advantages of making a lot of gravy is um, I like to save some of the oxtail gravy to make poutine. It's a Canadian dish where you, you put the gravy on the fries and the cheese and it's so good. So if you have extra gravy, that you can definitely do. But this is done guys look at this gorgeous gravy really glossy the meat is tender and it's not stringy really juicy and good when it comes to side dishes there are many options but i love to have oxtail with rice and peas we call it rice and peas in jamaica it's rice and red kidney beans delicious you can have it with your fresh coleslaw or creamy coleslaw but this is so 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 good i really hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't had oxtail you need to try it try it jamaican style first before you try it any other way all right thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye